Hello curious minds, what if we told you there's a tiny world between Mars and Jupiter that could one day be humanity's next great space colony? A place with more fresh water than Earth and gravity so low you could lift a car with one hand. Welcome to Ceres the mysterious dwarf planet that might just be the key to our future in space. But could we really survive there? Let's find out. Alright so let's imagine a future where humanity has mastered interplanetary travel, advanced spacecraft, nuclear propulsion, maybe even space elevators on Mars. Whatever it takes. After months, maybe even a year of traveling through deep space, we finally arrive at Ceres. Now what? Well, life here isn't exactly welcoming. Ceres may have some useful resources, but surviving on this tiny world would be anything but easy. Let's start with the first big challenge. Gravity. Ceres has only about 3% of Earth's gravity. That means if you weigh 150 pounds on Earth, you'd weigh just 4.5 pounds on Ceres. Sounds fun, right? You could leap ridiculously high, and lifting heavy objects would feel effortless. The downside? Our bodies are built for Earth's gravity. Long-term exposure to such weak gravity could lead to severe muscle and bone loss, just like astronauts experience in space. And unlike the Moon or Mars, Ceres' gravity is so low that we don't even know if the human body can adapt to it over time. Okay, so floating around with weak bones sounds bad. But what about the environment? Ceres is covered in ice, so it's got water, right? Yes, but before you pack your swimsuit consider this. The surface temperature averages around minus 105 degrees Celsius, or minus 157 degrees Fahrenheit. That's colder than Antarctica at its worst. And since Ceres has almost no atmosphere, there's nothing to trap heat. Temperatures swing wildly, and there's zero protection from space radiation, which is another huge problem. Without a thick atmosphere or a magnetic field, Ceres is constantly bombarded by solar radiation and cosmic rays. Living on the surface would be dangerous, long-term exposure could cause cancer, or other serious health issues. That's why any human settlement would likely need to be underground or inside thick protective habitats. That would provide natural radiation shielding and keep temperatures more stable. Okay, so we hide underground to avoid radiation and extreme cold. But how would we even get power? Solar power wouldn't be very effective. Ceres is three times farther from the sun than Earth, so sunlight is weak. We'd likely need nuclear power or creative solutions like solar reflectors in orbit to concentrate light onto the surface. And let's not forget the biggest challenge of all. Getting to Ceres in the first place. It's around 414 million kilometers or 257 million miles from Earth. With current technology, a one-way trip could take over a year. That means any colony would need to be almost completely self-sustaining. Resupply missions from Earth would be rare and expensive, so colonists would have to rely on local resources for water, oxygen, and fuel. So yeah, colonizing Ceres isn't going to be easy. But the big question is, are these challenges impossible to overcome? Alright, we've talked about the challenges, but despite all of that, Ceres might actually be one of the best places to colonize in the entire solar system. Let's talk about the reasons why a Ceres colony could be a game-changer for humanity. First, and maybe most importantly, Ceres has something that space colonists desperately need. Water. In fact, scientists believe that up to 25% of Ceres' mass is water ice. That's more fresh water than Earth has. And that's huge. Water isn't just for drinking. It can be split into hydrogen and oxygen, creating breathable air and rocket fuel. That means Ceres could become a refueling station for deep space missions. And speaking of rockets, here's another advantage, Ceres low gravity. While that's a challenge for human health, it makes launching spacecraft ridiculously easy. Lifting off from Ceres would take just a fraction of the energy needed to launch from Earth or even Mars. That makes it a perfect hub for space travel. Imagine refueling on Ceres and then heading off to Jupiter, Saturn, or beyond. But there's an even bigger reason why a Ceres colony might be valuable, its location. Ceres sits right in the middle of the asteroid belt surrounded by trillions of dollars worth of metals and minerals. If we set up a base on Ceres, it could become the center of asteroid mining operations. We're talking iron, nickel, platinum, and even rare elements that are scarce on Earth, all within easy reach. And if asteroid mining takes off, Ceres could be the ultimate gold rush town. And finally, Ceres could be a key stepping stone for exploring the outer solar system. It's much closer to Jupiter than Mars is, making it a perfect stop for missions heading toward Europa, Titan, or even interstellar space. So, while Ceres has its fair share of challenges, the potential benefits are massive. But is colonizing Ceres a realistic goal, or just a sci-fi dream? That's what we'll explore next. So, let's say we decide to go all in and build a human colony on Ceres. Where would we even begin? Well, first things first, we need shelter. And since Ceres isn't exactly a cozy place to live, we have to get creative. There are three main ways we could build a colony here. One of the best options, going underground. Ceres has tons of ice and we could dig beneath the surface to carve out massive tunnels or domes. And if we really want to go sci-fi, we could even melt out enormous ice caverns and turn them into pressurized living spaces. But what if we don't want to live underground? 
Another option is pressurized surface habitats, kind of like the ones NASA is considering for the Moon and Mars. These could be inflatable modules covered in thick layers of ice or regolith for protection. We'd need airtight greenhouses, radiation shielding, and artificial gravity solutions. But with the right technology, it's possible. And here's a wild idea. What if we don't live on Ceres, but above it? That's right. A Ceres space station in orbit could act as a hub for asteroid mining, research, and launching missions deeper into space. Colonists could live in rotating space habitats that simulate Earth's gravity, while robots handle operations on the surface. As we mentioned earlier, nuclear reactors would likely be our main energy source since Ceres is so far from the sun, but solar mirrors could also help by boosting available sunlight for power or even warming up habitats. And what about the basics? Food, water, and air. Luckily Ceres has tons of ice so water isn't a problem. We could split it into oxygen for breathing and hydrogen for fuel. As for food, we'd need hydroponic or aquaponic farms, basically growing plants in nutrient-rich water instead of soil, and to keep the air clean, we'd use advanced closed-loop life support systems, recycling everything just like on the ISS but on a much bigger scale. A series colony would also need transportation. Rovers, tunnels, maybe even maglev trains to move people and cargo, and since launching from Ceres is super easy thanks to its low gravity, we could even have spaceports sending ships all over the solar system. So, while building a colony on Ceres won't be easy, there are multiple ways we could make it work. Alright, we've got the blueprints for a Ceres colony, but how do we actually get there? And once we're there, how do we keep the supplies coming and stay connected to Earth? Current spacecraft would take a year or more just to reach Ceres. That's a long time in space. But with future tech, like nuclear-powered rockets or ion propulsion, the journey could become faster and more efficient. Even then, the trip would still be incredibly challenging. For one, resupply missions would be extremely costly and rare. That means a series colony would need to be as self-sustaining as possible. But just because resupply missions would be rare doesn't mean they wouldn't happen at all. We could use cargo spacecraft to send supplies from Earth every few years, and if Ceres becomes a hub for asteroid mining, we could ship materials back to Earth or other colonies. Ceres' low gravity makes it an excellent launch point for shipping, and could make transportation a bit easier, and if we don't want to leave the colony, well, robotics will be key. Unmanned cargo drones or autonomous rovers could deliver supplies, set up infrastructure or even mine resources, all without risking human lives. And of course, the colony will need a way to communicate with Earth and other colonies. Long-distance communication could be tricky because of the distance, but with high-powered radio signals or even laser communications, we could keep in touch with mission control. Let's say we've done it, we've overcome the challenges, built a thriving colony on Ceres, and established a reliable supply chain. What's next? What does the future hold for humanity's first dwarf planet outpost? First off, Ceres could become the center of the solar system for industry and exploration. Think of it as a stepping stone, a launch pad for missions further out into the unknown. But it's not just about exploration. Ceres could also become a center for scientific research. Imagine astronomers studying the stars and galaxies from observatories on the surface of Ceres, far from the light pollution of Earth. Or geologists unraveling the secrets of planet formation by studying the dwarf planet's unique composition. And here's a thought. What about space tourism? As the technology improves and Ceres becomes more accessible, it might not just be about research and mining. At its core, a Ceres colony represents more than just a scientific experiment, it's a new chapter for humanity, a place where technology, innovation and exploration create an entirely new society. One thing's for sure, Ceres is full of possibilities. The question isn't if we'll colonize it, it's when. Ceres has an incredible opportunity, but also massive challenges. Could we really turn this dwarf planet into a thriving space colony? Or is it just a dream for the distant future? What do you think? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this journey through space, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss our next cosmic adventure. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep looking up.